All right, hey there, Prox Gaming Crew, and this is Prox right here, and welcome back to the Spirals of Heroes Tale Let's Play. And if you didn't miss out there in the last one, well, we just went and entered into our time known as the Sunken Ruins, just for some dark gems, dragon eggs, and also with some light gems uh, throughout our time with the last one. But in this episode, we are still going to be doing that here within our time for today. Now, just wanted to go and point this out to you guys that this video and the rest of the other different videos that are going to be happening afterwards are all going to be post audio production um, because the way of how I'm going to be trying to handle out here with the Spyro. Uh, a hero's tale series is because uh since this game absolutely frustrates me to no end uh i was always about to be like literally throwing this game out of the window at some point uh just because of the way of how everything was handling around here within this game uh from this point onwards uh that is what is going to happen so i will just give you guys just the brief highlights the reactions and everything that has been going on out here within our time uh for this episode for today and the rest of the other series that are going to be happening onwards as well well, so let's get right on into this here um so basically what this whole episode is going to be all entailing is that i am going to be uh battling out with the boss of our time of the lost cities which i am uh, pretty excited around with that just so that we can uh, well at least just get ourselves all finished and done with with everything that has to be done here in this world and then we can go and move onwards into a place uh which is going to be a little bit more of a colder climate uh i believe we are going to be heading into a much more uh, snowier type of place that's going to happen afterwards so we don't have to go and head into any more tropical type of places for the time being um now if you guys kind of went and saw uh there was a big huge uh type of like area that has not been actually explored just yet well we are going to be actually be checking that out as well too and uh, now i didn't really get to go and deep dive into this type of particular area all that too much yet um but there is some extra buttons that we can actually be able to go and press around out here and we can be able to uh, get some more acrobatic spiral type of situations uh happening uh, throughout our time and uh, if you guys remember this was a spot that we were actually somewhat exploring for a little bit until the point that i decided uh that around within that whole green goop type area i ran out of invincibility and i completely got myself a game over within there uh because there is another spot that you can't actually be able to go and exit out from there uh but the invincibility only can last for so long so you have to like run into that spot as quickly as you can and uh i believe i am going to go and show that off to you guys i believe around out here uh later on uh but yeah there's some extra other little uh, dark crystals there if you ever do want to go and pick any of those up i don't really think those are really important the dark gems are the ones that you really do need so yeah so remember this part here this was where the light gem was going to be at and that was a problem because we ran out of uh, a lot of invincibility during that time and also too not only that but watch out for the falling rocks that are going to be around out there because they will push you away and then it will make you lose your invincibility even more if you don't uh, control it out all that too well. But now, since we went and hit that switch, we should actually at least now be able to hit that dark gem that's right there. And while doing so, it will now go and create another uh, little brand new area for us to go and still uh, will basically go out and uh, continue onwards exploring throughout the sunken ruins. Now... Uh, majority of this part as well too is that I will be going and talking on over to money bags most of the time uh, Just so that I can be able to get like more lock picks and other things of that type of nature Now I didn't really get to go and uh, realize this yet But if you actually do go and talk back to money bags at some point I think even during the time that you actually uh, head on into the whole lost cities uh, You can actually be able to go and get spark even more lock picks and you can uh, be able to buy more stuff uh, from money bags and you don't have to go and have to head back and forth back and forth back and forth between the different areas just because that you went and just saw like a golden chest uh then you well then you don't have to really go and uh, have to go uh do all that type of stuff anymore but if you have a whole lot of lock picks you could just be able to just use those like on the fly like all the time which is uh somewhat pretty nice so I think I went and did like my own little exploration from there and I did see that there was a lockpick that we have to go and uh, try to buy and I think that's what is going to be happening here I think right because I believe that's what our first thing was going to be doing but while we are going to be having to go and find out where money bags is going to be so I can buy myself out with a lockpick hopefully you guys are enjoying out here with the spirals of heroes tale series or the rest of the other different series that are happening on to the channel uh if you guys are new make sure that you guys do go and hit that subscribe button also too not only that but if you guys uh also do enjoy the episode out here for today uh you guys can also go and leave a, a like and also a comment down below to show your support for the episode um and also if you guys do want to go and get yourself notified for anything that is going to happen with this channel such as live streams 
or even uh, for that matter um, with like other new uh, videos that also happen uh, within the channel as well too because not only do we do Spiral's a Hero's Tale but if you guys are interested on Okami HD if you guys are interested in the Kirby's Epic Yarn co-op series that me and my friend Kevin are doing which has been really fun so far uh, two episodes in has been pretty fun uh, I believe episode two is already on to the channel already by now um, there could be a potential episode three as well following through with everything that's happening onto the channel so keep your eyes peeled uh, for anything of that uh, happening through um, what else do we have uh, I think right now we are moving back to guardian signs at some point because uh, I believe right now, uh, since we are doing Guardian Size, we are going to be doing a whole bunch of Ranger Net missions so far. Uh, so far, I think right now, we just went and got ourselves uh, with Heat Ran so that we can be able to go and uh, send that over towards into any of the different Generation 4 Pokemon games. I already just went and did that uh, just so I could do a test run of it. And it's pretty cool. So basically what happens, uh, if you guys may probably want to know about how you actually go and uh, Wi-Fi transfer everything, is that, um, so basically you have to have like a second Nintendo DS with you. And uh, what you do is, is that you go onto your certain game. It doesn't matter if it's Pokemon, Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver. Uh, but while you go on into there and you have both of the two DSs somewhat like side by side with each other, uh, you should get some sort of weird notification that actually creates another little uh, menu tab uh, within your Pokemon Heart, Gold, and Soul, Silver known as the Pokemon Ranger Wi-Fi connection. And you can go and click onto that and what will happen is is that it will like register itself and then you have to go and then well repeat the the step by like resetting your actual uh nintendo ds and then while you do that you actually have to go back into your wi-fi connection settings well not your wi-fi connection settings but your wi-fi uh for like the mystery gifts and everything so once you go and head on into like the actual mystery gifts because that's where a majority of all of those type of mystery gifts come from uh, you just go and click on, I think it's like, uh, I think you have to like receive it from a friend or something like that, which that's kind of like the, uh, the, like what your trainer, uh, is going to be all about, like with the guardian signs. And you should be able to go and just bring in over any of the, uh, mythical or even the legendary Pokemons that way. Uh, so that if you want to go and bring it over into, uh, it's a generation four type of games. So I know it's a little bit confusing at first because like at first you'll see like some sort of weird type of notification thing. And then you have to go through like a little, like registration type of thing to like actually set it up but then afterwards once you like reset your nintendo ds and then you go back then you should be able to like go and do all of your stuff for like the for like the mystery gifts and whatnot but it's a really cool awesome thing and i never even got to know all that too much even when i first went and played guardian size for the first time back in 2010 that i never even knew that uh heat ran would actually be something that you would be able to go and capture out twice so yeah even if you did go and like miss out on your opportunity i believe uh for heat ran in in the stark mountains you can actually go and get yourself a free heat ran right from actually doing guardian signs but not a whole lot of people actually never even played through guardian signs before but yeah there's a lot of little hidden events there that you can actually be able to get yourself like double the amount of pokemon if you have missed out on uh, any of those events from before so like you can even do like another shaman event if you wanted to so if you missed the oaks letter you can also go and uh do that one as well you can actually go and uh, bring the pokemon from there to generation four uh just by doing guardian sides or even if you missed out on the manaphy event as well too you could always go and uh get the uh, manaphy egg right from uh guardian signs uh, from there as, as well too uh, but this area here in particular was somewhat of a tricky area to be at and i never even knew this before but here in this part is that uh you actually can be able to use spyro's acrobatics throughout most of those blue poles to uh, be able to jump yourself uh from back and forth between each of the different type of targets that we have to go through because what we have to go and do is, is that we have to build ourselves a statue that is going to be uh, trying to rise out from the water and once that actually goes on and happens that will be the last dark gem uh, excuse me that we actually do need because once we actually be able to go and grab it with this dark gem we are basically going to be set and this is where we're going to be able to go and do the boss battle with the next up and coming boss here now since i already went and got myself a lock pick already we can get ourselves with 33 of the different light gems so far i will be getting myself i think all the way up to 34 i i want to say uh within our time in total uh by the end of what this episode is going to be for um, but I know that we're going to be catching ourselves a lot of dragon eggs, though, because there's a lot of, uh, well, I want to say there's a lot of dragon eggs to be found around out here in the Sunken Ruins. Now, uh, off recording, that Sparks uh, mini game that we were doing from before, already when it did that for the first time, uh, well, I think, like, during the time um, 
like just getting into this uh, episode, like just during right, like right off recording. Uh, first attempt, uh, like just before going into this one, uh, completely already went and uh, did everything that I need to do within there. I got myself with the dragon egg, uh, but unfortunately, did not get myself with the light gem though. It's a little bit more of a trickier type of way uh, to do the Sparks mini game in this sucking ruins. So I guess I'll have to try to figure out another way around out there at some point. But yeah, I just love the uh, the electrify attack because it's just kind of funny to just see like these guys get like uh, all electrified up and all that. But anyways, uh, let's go and keep on moving ahead through this direction. And I'm trying to remember exactly what happens through here. I don't know if there's any other extra golden chest or anything that's down this way. Because I'm pretty certain I think this should be coming like somewhat into a full circle around out here at some point. Because uh, because this whole area should now be able to go and take us right back over towards into the very beginning. Because if you guys remember, um, I think once we went and arrived over into the sucker Roots for like the very first time. Uh, there was a particular door that was completely shut to us. We couldn't even do anything about it. Well, here in this segment, I want to say somewhere around uh, while we're having to go and head all the way back over towards into this part here, uh, I'm pretty certain um, there was a uh, like there is like a like a target switch like type of button. You go and hit on that, and that door will will perfectly just go and uh, reopen itself back up. Now, we kind of have to wait for a little bit here, but there should be uh, somewhat of a uh, movable platform that's going to be here, and you can actually go uh, back up and down between it there. And uh, let's go and head all the way up into that part, and we should be able to go and see that there is going to be a golden chest right there. So even though that we can't do anything about with it now, since, again, I don't have the uh, the three lockpicks set onto Spyro right now, uh, we kind of have to go and uh, run all the way over towards to this door. The, the same as that door that was completely locked to us from before is now going to be now all opened up. So now with money bags already here, we could just go and uh, quickly dive right on over towards into that part and uh, go and talk it over back to money bags and now get ourselves with the next light gem that's going to be here, which is not all that too far away, just right on over that way. And, uh, and the good thing is, is that I already went and did all my uh, pre-editing uh, beforehand uh, during within this episode. So I don't really have to go and do any type of editing or anything of that type of nature at all whatsoever. But I will keep myself quiet for the uh, segments that do happen because there is going to be some voice acting for the uh, boss battles that are going to be happening at some point. So I will let you guys uh, go and enjoy uh, the cutscenes that will happen uh, within our time for that. So now I believe we are going to be going and heading back on out of the Sunken Ruins. There's no more for us to go and do unless if I want to go and 100% complete everything. But here we go. This is the boss door. It's finally here. Now, if you guys remember, um, during that little segment there for like the last Dark Gem, there's like a little notification blip that somewhat kind of happens there. And what happens is, is that you get like that little scroll with like a question mark on there. That will tell you that we actually have enough of the dark, well, enough of the different dark gems so that we can then go and head on over towards, uh, into, uh, well, uh, basically into where the, uh, where, where the, uh, boss is going to be. So, yeah, and also, too, uh, if you go and talk it over to money bags, uh, you can actually be able to get yourself, like, special, uh, teleporting powers that you can actually be able to head back to all the different, uh, money bag spots that you want to go and head back towards to with. Which I never really knew all that too much, but there you go. There's also with that as well, we got ourselves with all three lockpicks for Sparks so that we don't ever have to go and really worry about ever having to go and uh, repeat our talk back over to uh, Money Bags all that much. Unless if I need to get all three different lockpicks, that is, however. Okay, so here we are. We're back over this way, and I want to say that here, during the time of this area now, this is where the boss is going to be located at. So I'm just going to try and get myself like a little bit of some extra more gems. That's why I'm trying to knock out these enemies here as quickly as I can, just so I can be able to pick those up. Because I know that before we actually had like, I want to say a lot of gems beforehand, but I kind of had to waste out on some of them just so that I could kind of build up on Spyro here. people I fight say I'm smaller than they expected. You know, they're trying to psych me out. Oh, I guess I just assumed dragons were tiny. 
You know, I spend all my time in the water, so I don't get to see a lot of dragons. <laughs> And there we go. And you know what Spyro is kind of looking at, right? Well, that purple gem that what uh, Ineptune actually does have, that is going to be the exposing of the weak points that we do need. Now, here you have to be a little bit careful because Ineptune has like plentiful of different moves and uh, other things that can be a little bit scary. She does have like some sort of like uh, vomiting attack where she kind of like just sprays everywhere around out there with that. And uh, you want to be a little bit careful. She also does have like this type of thing where she sends out like these weird type of laser beams and uh, they will get a little bit more annoying every so often throughout the battle. So this is just like the first phase. So even though that right now it's not like as crazy as it should be, it's going to get a little bit more difficult uh, as time goes on. Uh, now, I think at some point she will start to go and toss random things at you as well, too. So you want to be a little bit careful when that does happen. But it seems like for right now, she's still going to go for her vomit attack. And uh, when she does go and uses her vomit attack, uh, she will get like herself like really tired. And then you can go in right for the uh, for the charge attack and start ke keep on hitting that uh, purple gem right there. So here we go. So now she's going to go and set up for the laser beams again. Now, I think like on the third attempt, uh, there will be like a third one of those. And uh, that one's going to be a little bit more higher up on the ground compared to the other two that's going to happen. So you really want to be very careful when that does happen there as well. But yeah, so kind of like what's going to be happening here with uh, with our first boss that, that we had to go and uh, basically take on, which that was Nort. Uh, basically, uh, what needs to go on from here is that like every time that we go for like a certain attack, it, it is going to like be like really slow. So it is going to like take like a really long while. Okay, and here we go. So now we're on to phase two. So now things are going to get a little bit more hectic here. Because not only is she going to be having the vomit attack, but she should be able to go and start throwing stuff at us. Now, I did have like an extra life on Sparks. So that's why you guys got to go and see Sparks was actually a little bit of a different color. Uh, sparks actually turned into a red sparks now unfortunately i don't have uh red sparks uh, with me uh but at some point we will be able to find ourselves a uh, a butterfly at some point and we will be able to gain back on sparks at some point around here soon yep and there's red sparks right there because we got ourselves with that extra health right so yeah if you want to go and talk back to money banks there is an extra health for uh for sparks and you will be able to go and keep that i think that is a permanent upgrade as well too i think if i can recall now, uh, during the time of me actually having to go and try to do uh, this certain episode, again, I was having some a little bit of some uh, OSSC upscaler issues as well, because for some reason, it's like this TV and the upscaler is having some problems where they don't like to reconnect all that too much together. But I think I found the sweet spot because because uh, what you can do is like on the settings is that you could always go and like adjust the, uh, the settings for what type of TV that you're going to be using. And uh, since I am using a 4K TV, it's a little bit different on trying to use like an Xbox uh, type of console out here because it is like a very old type of system, right? So sometimes the TV doesn't really like uh, trying to work around with the uh, with, with the uh, older type of stuff all that too well. But I think I found a nice good sweet spot and... All right, and here we go. And now we're going to be heading on into the third phase. Now, I believe uh, her third phase is just going to be tossing like a much more like bigger type of like bomb that she has that, that she kind of likes to throw around. So that one could be a little bit more of a trickier one trying to dodge that one because like she just like throws it straight right at you. Sometimes you can't really always go and dodge it all that too well. But here we go. So now uh, we're back to having two, but there should be a third one here. Because I'm pretty sure that once we start heading into uh, into a little bit more of lowering of her health, I'm pretty sure she should be able to uh, be able to send out all three of those again. Yeah, so watch out for the bomb attacks. And now she's going to go us out for another vomit attack as well. But all you have to do is just kind of wait in the back for a little bit. Yeah, and also too... You can also go in, like, uh, not even get yourself attacked by any of that type of vomit, though. Because you can actually just stay, like, really far away from it. And then you can just go in and then just set up a tackle right after. 
So yeah, here we go. So here comes out with the three. This one is really dangerous. Just keep your eyes peeled like on the third one though, because like the bottom ones are like somewhat more like easy to go and jump around. It's just the third one. Feels like I'm doing like some sort of like wipeout course or something trying to go through all that. <laughs> I don't know. I should probably try out the wipeout game on the Wii at some point. I never actually tried out the wipeout Wii games before. I think there was like two, I think there was. I think there was one for like 2009, and I think the other one came out like somewhere around just in the dying years of the Wii. I think it was like 2012. But there we go. And that will be a very big help because now we can actually be able to get ourselves with some water bombs as well too. Uh, but yeah, so now with this water breath in tow, uh, we can actually go and complete off with the rest of the different things that are here in the Lost Cities now. Uh, which that will be a very big help because I know that there has been some of these type of uh, water wheels that we've seen before that we can't really go and do too much. But now we can actually be able to go ahead and do so. Uh, but with that being said, everyone, I'm going to go and end it off here for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will be seeing you guys in the next one uh, for when we're done here.